Good morning, everyone. So, in today's botany class, we are going to see about the plant critical and the structure of stomata and their functions. So, they are very important component of a plant epidermal tissue system, the critical, which should present on the outer side of the epidermis and the stomata that are basically present in a side of the epidermal tissue. So let's take a look how a critical and stomata function as. So just begin with the stomata. Like if we talk about the introductory part of the stomata, so they are very small pores which are present inside the epidermal tissue. Or most of the time they are present inside the epidermis of leaves, but not always. They are also present on the surface of the stem. So they are not just limited to the leaf surface area, but if we wanted to talk how their abundance go with that, so most of the time they are present in the lower epidermis of the leaf in the terrestrial plant. But if we talk about the stomata of the hydrophytes plant, so they will be present on the upper surfaces. As they are very tiny in their shape, so that's why we cannot see them by our naked eyes. So we are going to have we are going to use a microscope or under the light microscope if we analyze a leaf we can see the numerous stomata will be present on the both the side of leaf in some plants the stomata are present on stem and other part of the plant as i said that they are just not defined only the leaf structural part but also they are present on the several other structures Stomata plays an important role in gaseous exchange and photosynthesis. So their major function, if we talk about, so their major function is to do the transpiration. That is the first, a very important. And second, gaseous exchange. And this gaseous exchange, that is going to help in the photosynthesis process has been done by the plants. Because the plants need oxygen and the carbon dioxide, both the gases for the, their uh, proper functioning carbon dioxide for the photosynthesis and oxygen for their respiration pattern. So in that time, these stomata are going to help the plant to have these gaseous exchange. So let's see how our stomata look like. So this is a very basic kind of a structure of a stomata. You can see this, they are the epidermal cells. Okay, the very first in which they are present, the green one, they are the epidermal cell, at, or you can say this is the location of the stomata, uh, stomata inside the plant body. After this green color epidermal cell, we are having this subsidiary cells. Okay, some parenchymatous cell, they covered the guard cell of the stomata, and these parenchymatous cell, which covering the guard cell of the stomata, they are known as the subsidiary cells. They also have a very important role to play when or how the stomata will be going to open and close. After that, subsidiary cell, this green kidney-like structure, green kidney-like structure, that is our guard cell. And they are, you can say they are green in structure, so hence they have chloroplast in them. Or you can say the chlorophyll pigment will be present inside these guard cells. So hence, the chlorophyll pigment is present inside these guard cells. They can do the function for the photosynthesis as well as. So in the center, this is, that is the stomatal pore. Or you can see this is our uh, main focus on the whole structure of the stomata. Because all the gaseous exchange, all the transpiration, or whatever the function that the stomata is going to perform, that is going to this stomatal pore. So this is all about the structure. Now, if we see the broadly, what are the types of stomata? So on the basis of uh, like the epidermal cell, uh, where they have to be present or the how their surrounding subsidiary cells will be present on these base, uh, on these base, or you can say, after this analyzation, we classify them under the six broad categories. So let's see. The very first is the anomocytic stomata. Okay, anomocytic stomata. Basically, in this kind of stomata, there are the epidermal cells which have a very fixed shape and size. Okay, 
this is not any random epidermal cell can be present or surround the stomata here so if we are having a very specific kind of epidermal cell that will be surrounding our stomata they will be called as anomocytic stomata so the stomata appear to be embedded in the epidermal cell and there is no definite number and arrangement of cells surrounding the stomata so basically they are having a fixed shape and size okay but in this case anomocytic stomata there will be no definite numbers okay there is like a 2 3 4 that uh, some kind like uh, further when we are going to see the diastatic and hyacetic they are having just fixed number of the definite cell which are going to cover our stomatal pore but here there is no definite number and arrangement of the cell around the stomata so if we are going to see any stomata which do not have a limited number of the parenchymal cells surrounding them but they are having a particular specific shape and size we are calling them the anomocytic stomata next here that is a anaocytic stomata second one so here the number of the subsidiary cells they are fixed okay but their size are unequal so here the stomata is surrounded by three subsidiary cells so the number which are going to surround the stomatal pore here that will be the number 3 okay but they are unequal in size so you can say they are not uh, having a very fixed or specific shape and size how like one of the three cell it will be smaller and two cell a little bigger as comparison to the third one so here the third cell first and second cell they are a little big in size as comparison to the third cell so very clearly simple language two big and one small cell we are having inside the anaocytic stomata third is diacytic stomata so as the name suggests di di is always referred to the two numbers so here the stomata is surrounded by a pair of subsidiary cell that are perpendicular to the back cell so here are uh, the number of the subsidiary cell they are the two and how they will be present they are going to be present parallel to the guard cell one on the right side and one another one is a left side so the number will be going to fix two and we are also have to be very specific that they have to be perpendicular to the guard cell next here parasitic stomata so what happen in the parasitic stomata they will be present parallel to the stomatal pore and the guard cell in the case of diacytic they will be perpendicular to the guard cell sorry perpendicular to the guard cell and in a parasitic stomata they will be parallel to the stomatal pore and the guard cell so the stomata are continuously surrounded by two subsidiaries where are arranged parallel to the stomatal pore and the guard cell so here also the number will be fixed there will be two subsidiaries arranged parallel to the stomatal pore and guard cell so this is about the parasitic stomata now we will take a look the gramineous stomata so how the gramineous stomata will be look like so each stomata possesses two guard cell which are shaped like dumbbell okay now the gramineous stomata are all about the shape of the subsidiary cell so what kind of shape of the subsidiary cell will be present on that basis we define this kind of stomata so the shape of the guard cell will be having the dumbbell okay the dumbbell i think you have you seen how a bell uh, shape look like so the same this dumbbell shaped guard cell will be present to covering the stomata the subsidiary cells are parallel to the guard cell the subsidiary cell will be present parallel to the guard cell not intersecting each other the guard cell are uh, found narrower in the middle and wider at the end so uh, hence they will be formed like a dumbbell shape how the guard cell will be found narrower in the middle and wider at the end okay the end will be wider they you can see they are thick or you can see they are a little broad at the end of the cells but they will be very thin in the between so you can see dumbbells okay you uh, i think you have seen the dumbbells in the gym so uh, they are just look like a 
dumbbells. So here, uh, there are the types of histomata diagrammatically represented. So the very first, you can see the anamocytic or irregular shaped sides. Okay, this there are no definite shape and size of the number in the anamocytic. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry, they are having a uh, specific type of shape, but number will be not calculated. That like the two or four in the anamocytic or another one. So that's why. In this case, you can see the uh, B side that is an isocytic. Okay, so B they are having this fixed kind of arrangement. They in these they are surrounded by the three cell in a B diagram, the very above uh, structure of stomata. You can see here, like they are having these two bigger cells and one small cell. Okay, if you are going to see this kind of stomatal structure, you can simply say them that is a an isocytic. Two bigger cell, one smaller cell. Third one is a parasitic. So here you can see this is the guard cell, and they are present perpendicular to the guard cell. That will be the parasitic. Here, uh, sorry, parasitic. They will be the parallel. Uh, sorry about that. Parasitic. They will be the parallel about the guard cell. But in the D, this will be the diacitic. Okay, diacitic. They will be perpendicular to the guard cell. You can see here this diagram. These are the dark guard cell and they will be perpendicularly present. So this is called the diacytic kind of histomata. Next here, we are having this granaceous one. So granaceous, you can see that they are very thicker at this uh, last year structure and very thin inside the middle. So hence we can call them, they are like the dumbbell shape histomata. So that's why we are calling them the granaceous. And Grimacian is also very common inside many species. So this was all about the types. Now if we see the detail of the structure of stomata in little detail, how the structure look alike. So the stomata consists of minute spore that is called the stomata. And that is surrounded by a pair of guard cell. So here this uh, stoma that is the central pole or which is responsible for the every gaseous exchange transpiration here and they will be surrounded by the guard cell. So the guard cell basically guarding them here and uh, the whole functionality of the stoma will be governed by these guard cells. The stomata open and close according to the turgicity of the guard cells. So the turgicity of the guard cell, they will decide that if the stomata are going to open or it remain closed. So the cell wall surrounding the pole is tough and flexible. The shape of the guard cell usually differ in both monocot and dicot. So the cell wall of this pole, which have to be surrounded, that is tough, but it is flexible because they needed to work for their closing and opening. Or if they wanted to be work on their closing and opening, they needed to be flexible. So that's why they are the flexible. Shape of the these guard cell, which are covering this stoma portion, that can be different as in monocord they will be a little smaller and in dicord they are, have to be very developed. Though the mechanism continue to be same, but the mechanism of opening and closing of the stomata that will be same even in the dicorticodin and or, or the monocorticodin. Procedure will be same that how they will be open and closed. But the structural analysis can be different. The structure can be different. Maybe monocot having not that much trouble of the guard uh, cell as they will be inside the dicotyl cell. So guard cell are bean shaped. So we already seen the diagram of the guard cell. They look like a bean cell and they are green. So hence they are having chloroplast in them. So due to having the chlorophyll, they can capture light energy and do the photosynthesis also. So the subsidiary cell around the guard cell, they are the accessory cell to the guard cell. So the, the subsidiary cell which cover the guard cell here, they can also be named as a accessory cell. They are not the essential one that their present has to be very needed, but they have a major role to play. That's why they present there. But sometimes, the stomata can also work without having these accessory cells. 
so these accessory cell they need to push the guard cell for the turgidity when these uh, when they are finding a wave of the water or you can see that the water mark can be enhanced in the uh, nearest epidermal cells or the subsidiary cells then only the turgidity of the guard cell can going to be increased and that led to the uh, stomata will be open so the protect epidermal cell and the guard cell expand during the stomatal opening so their work is when they are pushing that uh, uh, stomatal opening at that at that time when it is expanded so they needed to be protect particular guard cell and stomata cell the average number of stomata is about 300 per square mm of the leaf surface that's a quite huge number like the stomata having 300 stomata per square micrometer so this is a very small distance but the number of stomatal presence is very high so you can see that how much amount of the transpiration can be done by the plants next this is a structure we all already go through so now we will see the functions what are the functions which can be performed by our stomata so the very main and important function is here that is stomatal opening and closure that help in the gaseous exchange between the plant and surrounding so these stomatal opening and closing if there will be no stomatal opening and closing then there will be no gaseous exchange and no transpiration so that's why this is a very huge or important function that can be done by the stomata it help in transpiration and removal of excess water in the form of water vapor so they can evaporate the water if the quantity of water is uh, quite more inside the plant body so they need to be evaporated so that evaporation work will be done by the stomata through the process of the transpiration so this transpiration process is very important to remove the excess amount of water from inside of leaf to the outside of the environment next year a stomatal closure at night prevent water loss escaping through pores so at the night these stomata got to be closed so closing of the stomata cannot lead to the coming out or you can say the escaping the water from the pore so that's in that way they can help preventing the water out in so in maintain the moisture balance according to weather by opening and closing they can also you know moisture balance when if they are uh, working on the water efficiency like how uh, water quantity inside the plant so that's why they are making uh, maintaining the moisture content inside the plant body like if the excess of water get going out so moisture level will be getting down or if they are not transpiring water and the quantity of water getting increasing inside the plant body then the moisture content will be high inside so this needed to be balanced Na neither too much water should be inside nor a less amount of water should be inside so that's why they are doing their best to hold on on the uh, quality or quantity of the water inside the stomatal facilitated carbon dioxide uptake and release of oxygen during the process of photosynthesis another very important function and the humans need them so much like uh, when the photosynthesis happen oxygen will be released as a byproduct with the glucose so at that time these stomata plays an important role so whatever the oxygen that has been made by these photosynthesis process that needed to be out and at that time stomata open their pore and uh, outing or you can say they just release the oxygen from the uh, leaf to outside world now we talk about the mechanism like uh, these all function which have been performed by the stomata they can only happen when they are doing their mechanism for opening and closure so now we will see the what is the mechanism for the opening and closing of the stomata so this whole process of like how or when the stomata going to open and close this is all depend on the turgid pressure so this is a key term here whenever you are going to explain it anyone or someone ask you how you will open and close stomata 
So if you are going to use the very first intraoral pressure, they will know that you know that how the mechanism work of opening and closing. So this intraoral pressure that is caused by the osmotic flow of water in the guard cell. So if the water amount is more inside the guard cell, so this is a guard cell. When the water amount going to be high, the more amount of the water will be present here. so they will uh, making a pressure on their wall okay when they are making a pressure on their wall that pressure is called the turgor pressure okay the pressure that was developed by the excessive amount of water inside a guard cell and that water pressure on the wall of the guard cell that is known as turgor pressure so hence the turgor pressure increase the water the stoma will be open because they are need some space to expand and then they are needed some uh, state to or you can say the some space to extend they needed to be open they cannot be closed closing can moderate them or more so that's why they needed to be open so hence the turgor pressure increase so now the stomatal pore open so the expand resulting in the opening of stomata when the guard cell lose water they become flaccid okay when the whole water can be released through the stomatal opening so when after releasing of that particular amount of water they become flaccid and after becoming flaccid leading to the stomatal closure so after that uh, when the water is gone so there will be no turgor pressure so the cell become flaccid and stomatal pore going to be closed so the stomata normally open when the light strike the leaf and close during the night so in the normal let me talk about that part when they are going to open and close so most of the time when the sun striking the leaf or sun striking the stem so at that time stomata will be open and most of the time at the night they will be closed so this is all about the opening and closing of stomata you can see at this time cell is placid so they will be the close but if this time they will be having a turgor pressure they will be open so this pore when they are having some space in between this guard cell if you are looking that space at that means the stomata is open but if you are not going to see any space between two guard cell that means that stoma is closed a single stomata is always known as a stoma that's why they are naming them stoma don't get confused with like uh, uh, above they are adding this stomata and now here in the diagram they are naming them the stoma so basically the one single stomata will be known as a stoma that was all about the stomata now we will go through the plant cuticle so if we see how the plant cuticle work so they are the very composite structure not the simple structure because they have a major role to play inside the plant body so hence they needed to be very complex how they are be complexing so composed of a covalently linked macromolecule scaffold of cuticle and a variety of organic solvent soluble lipids okay so this these are the major component of the plant cuticle the very first is a macromolecule scaffold of cuticle cuticle is a very fundamental kind of component of this cuticle and second they are the organic solvent soluble lipids and they are collectively termed as waxes okay this whole cuticle and lipid thing when they are collectively called they will be termed as waxes but if we talk about solely about the cuticle that is made up of 90% of the cuticle substance macromolecules of cuticle so this cuticle and cuticle they have to be play a role by expelling the water from the plant or you can say like if we are having a zero fight situation okay means plant cannot reduce more water they cannot transpire water from inside to outer side because we already have a very limited amount of water inside the plant but the uh, environment this is getting hotter and hotter they need transpiration badly but plant cannot have that uh, capacity to do that at that time cuticle help plant to restrain their water to uh, you can say uh, means storing in their water so that's why this cuticle uh, 
this is a major function of the cuticle inside the plant. They help plant to store their water as they are inside. Although the cuticle is usually considered independently from underlying polysaccharide cell wall of the epidermis, the two structures are physically associated and have some overlapping functions. So basically, uh, they you can say these are the poly polysaccharide cell wall of the epidermis. They are just present above the epidermal layer. So hence, they can do all the things which I just explained. So indeed, the cuticle can be considered a specialized lipid modification of the cell wall, just as lignification is a common modification of plant secondary cell wall. What happens when the sclerenchyma tissue develop inside the plant? They are just nothing, only the deposition on the parenchymal cell. So if any kind of deposition can be led on the parenchymal cell, they will be become in the sclerenchyma tissue. A little same phenomena is going on here when the epidermis just they are having some kind of lignification or you can say the lipid modification on their cell wall and they are having some extra covering on their cell wall at that time we name them the plant cuticle. So the micro, uh, microscopic structure of the cuticle is often divided into two domains. So if we are going to see our cuticle under the microscope, there are two main domains based on the histochemical staining and their presumed chemical composition. So if we wanted to see them, we have to stain some plant critical and have to see into like uh, microscope. So on the basis of their staining capacity, like something going to be stained more and some do not absorb stain that much. On the basis of that, we divide it into two domain. Very first. Acute and rich domain with embedded polysaccharide, which is referred to as a cuticle layer. The very outer one that it will be called cuticle, uh, cute and rich uh, domain, and that is embedded in the polysaccharide. So, this is called the cuticular layer, and an overlying layer that is less abundant in polysaccharide but enriched in the waxes referred as a cuticle proper. So, two layers here. One is a cuticle proper and second is a cuticle layer with having a, a lot of polysaccharide overlying. So that was a cuticle layer having a less abundant polysaccharides and enriched in waxes that we can call them the cuticle proper. So the waxes are either deposited with the cutin matrix, can be called as the intracuticular wax or accumulates on the surface as the epicuticular wax crystal. So on the position of at what place wax will be present, we can divide them into the two names, intracuticular wax and epicuticular, or you can say extracuticular. Intracuticular, it means they will be deposited within the cutin matrix. Wax inside the cutin matrix, we call them the intracuticular. Waxes on the surface of the cutin matrix, they will be called as epicuticular wax crystal. So these are, you can say, these are the component analysis that can be present inside our epidermal tissue covering or cuticle covering. Next year, these epicuticular waxes can offer distinct macro, uh, macroscopic surface property, like epicuticular films are responsible for the glossy appearance, common to many leaves, fruit, while epicuticular waxes crystal account for the dull, glacious appearance of broccoli, leaves, arabidopsis, stem. So you can say that on the basis of this epicuticular and this uh, intracuticular, this epi and intracuticular, we can make anything to shine and we can make anything to be rough enough. Like if we are having the epicuticular wax crystal, okay, the surface is going to be rough. But if in the contrast, if we are having a layer, okay, a layer of a glossy, then we are having a shiny surface on the fruit and some leaves. So that uh, basically based on what kind of uh, wax is present, here, surface wax or wax crystals. Cuticle architectural organization can be discerned using a number of microscopic techniques. So if you wanted to see a cuticle structure on a plant surface, there are several techniques you can go through. 
like the very uh, you can say the very effective one that is the scan it is called the scanning electron microscopy can reveal the elaborate the diverse morphologies of the apicutical wax so basically if you wanted to see the morphological analysis means the structure you can analyze from the outer side if you wanted to see that you can go into the sam while transmission electron microscopy if we see tam that is called tam in short uh, transmission electron microscopy that are going to show the distinct patterning of interior layer of the cuticle through the approach does not allow the visualization of the wax structures so basically if you wanted to see the external structure or morphology you can go through the sam if you wanted to see the anatomical portion or internal structure but you are not going to allow to see the visualization of that structure only the anatomical structure of cuticle then you can go to the tam so the cuticle vary considerably in their architecture depending on special and ontogeny difference dramatically in thickness so basically if you wanted to uh, talk about that how thick a cuticle can be present on the epidermis cell so that whole scenario is basically depend on their ontogeny means from which they get originated from which they have been come so on these basis only we can begin uh, uh, you know we can identify we can con uh, confirm that what uh, kind of thickness will be going on that particular plant so their thickness can be from a nanometer to the micrometer scales in the later cases so it can be from nanometer to micrometer that is huge difference light like microscopy can be used to elucidate the fine structure of cuticle and epidermal cell while histochemical staining coupled with confluent and microscopy can further resolve three dimension cuticle architecture so basically in a short of all these that there are uh, so many microscopy techniques now that is we are having that they can reveal a large number of the cuticular surfaces structural organization like how a cuticle can be looked from outer side to the inner side what are their layers in which layers they are present what are their thicknesses what the particular surface size are they crystallized are they smooth so these all the things you can uh, have now by having some microscopic identifications now you can see the diagram here epicuticular wax crystal if you are having or you uh, needed to see a crystal how it going to be look they look like this the gray one and uh, this is a epicuticular wax film okay if this kind of wax film is going to present on any kind of surface that then they will going to make that the uh, surface look glossy but if uh, this kind of appearance will be present on the surface then they are going to make it rough after this these are the intracuticular wax okay so these waxes are present inside the cuticular membrane so that's why this cuticle will be known as the just under the intracuticular wax they will be known as a cuticular layer and this whole cuticular first very outer one that are having this uh, luxurious film or these epicuticular wax crystal they can be known as cuticle proper but the combination of cuticle proper and cuticular layer they will be collectively known as the cuticle so if you wanted to talk about their collective nature so these will be the collectively called the cuticle you can see the cutin is a main component that is present here and these are uh, green one just uh, down side to the orange layer that are the polysaccharides okay so the major two component of the cuticle first is the cutin and second is the polysaccharide so you just simply can remember these is our cuticle or you can say the plant cuticle that is made up of two major components one is cutin second one is the polysaccharide they are having two distinct layer of waxes inside them epicuticular wax film and intracuticular wax in the cuticle proper there will be two type of surfaces epicuticular wax crystal and epicuticular wax film 
So this is a whole about the how the critical critical uh, organization will be present on the surface of epidermal tissue. Now also you can see here the diagram. Like this is the diagram of SAM. And this is the diagram of TAM. Okay, and this D1, these are you can say under the light microscope. So under the light microscope, you can see there are two types of the staining technique has been used to identify the different layer of the cuticle. The red stain, they are showing us epicuticular wax film. The blue one, just down this, they are showing us the cuticular layer, cuticular layer or intracuticular wax form. So this type of diagram we can even see in our labs by the just staining we can cut a section of a plant material, then we can go through the staining, and just after that, we can see that under the light microscope as a variable inside our labs. So you can go through and see how the epidermis look like. Sam or Tam, they just uh, need a way more handling process. They are, uh, you can say, they are uh, a little costly process as comparison to the light microscopy. So we can uh, easily go through with this light microscopy and identify these two distinctive layers. So these were the uh, whole thing about the diagram here, like the schematic diagram highlighting the major structural feature of the critical and underlying epidermal cell, not round to scale, the first one. Second B, that was this. This is the SAM diagram I told you. Uh, scanning electron micrography image of an arabiodopsis leaf. So they have been used to arabi arabiodopsis leaf epidermis overlying cuticle, and that is bar 5 on in the nature. C diagram was stem. So the transmission electron micrograph image of arabiodopsis, same, but they were showing on the morphological analysis in the, uh, this one. Sorry. In B structure, they are going uh, just having the morphological feature in that. But in the C section here, in the TEM, you can see the internal layer, but you cannot see that the wax layer, okay? Epicuticular wax layer and intracuticular wax layer. They cannot be seen under the TEM microscope. Only what you can see, two distinctive layers, cuticle proper and cuticular layer. So only cuticle layer identification can be done under the TEM. But if you wanted to see the morphological analysis clearly, you can be seen under the SEM. Plus D1, that is from the light microscope image, showing the cuticle of a mature green cyst to matter food, stained with sedan red and polysaccharide cell wall stained with alakins blue. So this alkaline blue and this sudan red which we also use inside the lab for staining our uh, sections so this is the section of a tomato green stage tomato okay not the uh, mature red tomato that is from the green stage tomato fruit that has to be stained and you can easily identify you can also see that the stomata sorry not stomata the covering of the tomato plant they are also having very uh, glossious uh, texture or you can say some greasy like appearance very uh, shiny in surface so that's why we can say that they're having the apicuticular wax surface inside them this apicuticular wax film that will be present on the tomato plant so that's why they are having this glossy appearance so this was all about the stomata and your critical. Now I think you will be able to answer these simple questions that are based on stomata. The very first is here, stomata are present on our outside of which they are abundantly present. The ions that flow back to the guard cell from epidermal cell at the end of the day are which ion which are going back. The main task of stomata is to do, so what is the major function? Plant in desert have only few stomata to reduce. Why they are having this uh, small number of stomata? I think you can answer. The singular word word for the stomata is, so I told you, like uh, what was a single stomata will be called. 
The gut seal flanking is to better control oxygen and carbon dioxide entering the leaf by opening and closing the what is the main feature that controlling that. During the day, the plants keep their stomata in water stage. The inner side of the gut cell is what the surface look like. The outer side of the gut cell is in what shape. And last, the number of the gut cell of the stoma is. That is very easy. I think you can go through all the questions all related to the stomata. So if you have some problems in this lecture, you can also go through these references. They're having a very... Uh, you can say very precisely elaborated all the parameters regarding the stomata and cuticle and epidermal tissues. I think that's all for today. And still, if you guys are having any problem in the lecture, you can just ask me anytime.